Simon of the Board AEL here. Thank you for joining me as always as we continue on the very strange framing, shooting, location videos, but that's okay. Basically, it'll be like this for two weeks. All of a sudden, kapow! We're going to have a brand new, very exciting studio. And of course, I'll show you around. It's like the most YouTube video ever. But before then, as for some reason, I've just I got my little camera up, right? So you have the screen. I sorted all the lighting out, and now all of a sudden... <laughs> The sun has come to kick my ass. Oh, well, we're just going to have a shiny head for this video. So it is Tuesday, the 16th of August, as I am filming this. And on Thursday, the 18th of August, I am flying out to the United States of America to have a match for Mission Pro Wrestling. Now, this is crazy in many, many different ways. One, somebody has actually paid for me to go to a different country to have a professional wrestling match. That's basically like on your dream <laughs> bucket list okay when i started wrestling and when i got into it genuinely all i said to myself was just have one match have one match and move on to something else and not, not move to something else get away from wrestling but have one match and then see how you like it you don't like it and as we know i thought it was the best thing ever and i continued i continued on doing it and look, i've had some really cool you know uh, opportunities such as this you know i've wrestled in scotland and, you know, I've been able to wrestle abroad when, when I've been out there. But for someone to fly me, you know, eight hours across that old pond so that I can wrestle for them is awesome. And the other cool thing about it is, of course, Mission Pro Wrestling. Well, there's, there's, there's numerous things that I think are awesome about it. Firstly, it's run by Thunder Rosa, who's the AEW Women's Champion right now. And that's ludicrous. <laughs> that's not a thing I should be able to say out loud. So hopefully we'll be able to get some content done with Thunder as well and all the crazy things she gets up to. But the other badass thing about it is that it is an all-women's promotion. Straight away, your eyebrow went up. And you're like, Simon, if it's a women's promotion, why are you on it? Well, it's nice and simple. And it's actually something that's opened my eyes. Definitely something I was aware of, but now I'm hyper aware of it, which I think is really important. You know, it's hard enough to get a wrestling booking as it is if you are a, uh, you know, if you're a man, because most wrestling cards are predominantly male heavy. So when you all of a sudden flip that round, you think, well, imagine I'm a woman trying to get a wrestling match anywhere. Some shows, most shows, I suppose, only have one women's match on there. So that's twice, three times, four times, ten times as hard in order to get a booking. And that's why, before we can address this balance, it's really awesome that people like Thunder Rosa, who are a you know, proper super duper star in this wrestling world, are sw they're switching the balance, right? So I don't know how many, um, how many matches are on this, on this show. Probably about eight to ten usually is what you get. But it means you get... Eight matches that will be, you know, predominantly women's matches in order to grow that and get to the point, like I say, where it's 50-50. And then you'll get your one or two men's matches. See what they've done there? So they flip reversed it, which is actually, I don't want to sound too cheesy here or too ridiculous. And if you want to roll your eyes and leave a comment, that's perfectly fine. But it's another reason why I think it's actually quite badass to be associated with it. Because wrestling is for everyone. It doesn't matter who you are, man, woman, trans, gay, Christian, Jewish, Hindu, Muslim, whatever, whatever you determine yourself to be and whatever makes you happy is what you should do and everybody is allowed into the wrestling bubble but very sadly very unfortunately we're not quite there yet I think you've got to hold your hands up in the air and be honest with yourself so you know for me to be a part of this and hopefully you know I'm not saying I've got a big platform or anything like that but even if I can shine a teeny tiny star a teeny tiny spotlight onto it I think that's a really important thing to do anyway just to get to the point of this video I also was able to interview a couple of people from Mission Pro Wrestling and we're going to get to those interviews right now. So hopefully you can learn about, well, just professional wrestling in general, I suppose, what these people have been up to and how, you know, they're hoping to use Mission Pro and all the other projects that they're involved in in order to try and spread this message. So for starters, we've got Holly Dead, who's the MPW champion. I mean, as of now, who knows what could happen at Hard Day's Night, again, going down <laughs> this Saturday, August 20th, in, in Austin, Texas, of course. And I'm pretty sure there's still a few tickets available. You should absolutely come down. Come down and watch me wrestle. And if you run up to me and say, Scallybag, I will know that you've watched this video and I will give you a prize. I don't know what that prize will be, but I'll find something. So again, come down this Saturday, August 20th. Go search for Mission Pro Wrestling on social media to get all the details that's the best way to do it although there will be some some stuff in the in, in the description below but say scally bag to me i will know that you've watched this and you'll definitely get something so we do have holly dead who's going to talk about stuff we also have maddie rankowski who is also going to be on the show in a tag team match just giving us a bunch of information so check them out and hopefully wednesday thursday friday saturday i will see you in four days time and just to tie in the mental health stuff as we always do of course i'm scared of course i'm intimidated of course i'm apprehensive about it it's a crazy thing to do but these are also the best things to do i think feeling that way in situations like this not throughout all of life is a privilege and i truly do mean that the fact that somebody is giving me this opportunity i think is the most badass thing in the world so here are a couple of interviews remember scallybag 
and I hope to see you on Saturday. All right, okay, so some of that video corrupted. So, of course, this Saturday, I am taking on JP Harlow. And if you go on any of Mission Pro Wrestling's feeds, their social feeds, their Twitter feeds, their Instagram feeds, you will just see constantly him and that jabroni friend of his mocking me, <laughs> mocking Simon Miller. The other day, they were even wearing a bald cap. Like, they thought that was funny. Now, between you and me, it did make me laugh, but that is not the point. So, of course, I'm always going to talk about my opponent. I'm always going to talk about the person that I'm facing. It is J.P. Harlow. And while he thinks he's doing this for the United States of America, I've had a lot of people get in touch with me and say, no, Simon, we want you to kick his ass. So that's exactly what we're going to do. What I'd done in the original video was better than this, but time is against me. Point is, please come down and watch me beat up JP Harlow. Hello, my friends, Simon Miller here. And today I am very privileged and very excited to be joined by none other than pro wrestler extraordinaire, Maddie Rankowski. Maddie, how are you doing today? I'm good, even better since you got my name right. <laughs> I get it right? Good. Yes. There we go. You see, I, <laughs> what, what, what do you usually get then? How do, how do people usually pronounce it? They don't be like, Maddie... Oh my God, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good name. I think surely it's one of those names you don't want to get changed as well. I think it, it sticks in the memory straight away. <laughs> exactly. I got to put some culture on people. <laughs> exactly. And it passes the Google test. If you Google Maddie Rankowski, you're going to, no one else is going to come up. You're going to come exactly. up. Exactly. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. No, no, you will. You will. So uh, we, of course, have come together thanks to uh, Mission Pro Wrestling who are having their Hard Day's Night event on August the 20th. For some reason, I'm on that show. Still haven't entirely figured out how I managed to wrangle this. But more importantly, you're on that show. So what I wanted to talk to you about briefly, as well as some other subjects down the line, is how has everything been going for MT MPW in general? And how do you feel uh, sort of about the, the match that's coming up in like two weeks or whatever it is? Yeah, so after after we won our grand little tag team belts, um, shortly after after I actually suffered um, a hand fracture, oh, I um, and I had to have surgery. So the twentieth will actually be my first match back after about two to three months. I so. Um, am I hard headed? Am I ready? It's a great question. It's still up in the air at this point, but I think I'll do whatever it takes to not lose these belts, you know, first title defense. So I think that's pretty exciting. So yeah. the 20th is not just about my comeback. It's not just about my first title defense. It's about kind of gaining that respect that me and my partner, Roche, maybe don't have yet, but we are excited to prove it, I guess. Absolutely. And I just want to point out, like, I don't know how I missed that. I too am coming back from a hand fracture. I have only I have only had two matches back since I did it. And then I think when we get to the 20th, it will be like my fifth or sixth. I think I got a couple. Yeah, I got a few before then. So we can just share stories afterwards. You're yeah, okay. we'll Everybody like okay? trade careful high fives. <laughs> That's right. How do you find that though? Because um I mean, in terms of pro wrestling terms, you're still quite new, right? Everyone says, you know, you've got to get five, six years before. Well, some people say you've got to get five, six years under your belt before <laughs> it starts to click. I remember when someone told me that, I was like, oh, man, I'm, that's why. You're like, wow, do I have that time? Right, no, no, I don't. So, I mean, how, how is it for you, you know, being injured? And also sort of, because I know when I, that's a second major, well, one major injury, we'll call this a minor one, because it's only out for sort of eight weeks or so. How do you find it from like a confidence standpoint and a momentum standpoint? Because I, I always find it takes me a good, well, probably a few matches before I even feel settled again. And then I kind of start to push myself. Yeah, it's definitely daunting um, having to sit at home this past couple of like months um, and watch like people get opportunities. Like I'm a very competitive person. Um, and so I'm like watching these matches happen. I'm like trash. I could do that. I could do so much better. <laughs> and then <laughs> yesterday I went to the wrestling school for like my first bout of like real training. And I am sore um, just from doing like 90 squats and some butt kicks and some high knees. And I'm like, crap. <laughs> <sighs> I may have uh, I may have overestimated, overestimated myself on this one. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's the only way to find out, right? You just got to kind of throw yourself back in the fire and allow yourself to That's catch up a little say. bit. That's what they say. So well, I may need a little help, but I guess it's a good thing it's a tag match. So right, I hope it makes sense. get some help when I need it. <laughs> Absolutely, right? You could just stand on the apron, take the hot tag, run in, but beat go, everyone go, up. Go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
And how has it been for you as well? Because I think I'm right in saying you've been going about two years now, three years, is that about right, since 2019? Yeah, just coming up on the third. But I feel like that's not real because like COVID happened literally three months into my first year. So I feel like... We should put like one of those, what are those called? Equal to or less than signs? That's, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Three years, equal to or less than. <laughs> how did you, how, what, were you able to do anything during that period? Because I think America was slightly more, because over here it was just, no, you get nothing for 18 months. Was it a bit more um, lean over there? Were you able to get some reps in or anything? For like the first three months, everything was closed. Um, And then I think about three months after I was able to do like one promotion, but they were doing like close set tapings. Um, And so you had to like get tested and whatnot. And then there was just like nothing ish until December ish is when I got the call that I was able to go up to, or I guess down to uh, Jacksonville to do the AEW dark stuff. And so then it started picking up more after that, but we kind of slowed down, but here in Texas, everyone's like, we ain't got to wear no masks. This is fake. (laughs) (laughs) We just plow on regardless, right? Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. (laughs) How was the AEW experience as well? Because again, like you said, you, you, uh, we'll go with relatively new. I think it's all, you know, it's going to be specific to the person. I mean, some people are just, you know, naturals at this. So how was it kind of in the early going, going to a company that really is the second biggest wrestling company in the world? I mean, that's the truth of it. I and mean, you can, yes. you, can, you can't really <laughs> argue it. So how, you know, how was that? How did you approach it? How was the experience? Um, it was terrifying. I approached it with my mouth closed and my ears open. Uh, <laughs> but no, it was definitely terrifying. Um, I had done some extra work with WWE literally like the January before COVID hit. And that's how you do that. You do it with your mouth closed and your ears open at that time. Um, so going into AEW, that's how it that's how it started. And they're like, hey, guys, we're not like scary. Um, we would appreciate it if you like spoke to us, said hello, make sure like we are friendly. And I was like, oh, so that's how they do it. <laughs> that's what they mean by a different energy back <laughs> in the backstage. Yeah. So after like the first time you were able to get a little bit more comfortable, but obviously not too comfortable. Um, that's not that's not cool. Um, <laughs> but it was it was definitely terrifying because there's people like Matt Hardy who you grew up watching and you're like, oh, shit, that's Matt. <laughs> But then you're like, compose yourself. I'm a professional. <laughs> no, I think you have to be that way as well, don't you? I think you have to almost mentally, even though you don't think it, put yourself on their level because then that gives you the confidence to try and push through. I mean, yeah, I think they say fake it till you make it. Um, <laughs> I'm still faking it, but one of these days I'll make it. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, I was going to ask you about that because you just mentioned the backstage atmosphere at AEW. And of course, there's been sweeping changes in WWE. Do you, yes. do you think that will be one of the things that kind of carries across, maybe more relaxed, more laid back, more welcoming, I suppose? Um, I think so. I mean, hopefully they'll be more welcoming with their recruiting as well um, and not be ageist against us grandmothers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll wait for that. <laughs> no, I, I don't, don't get me wrong. I know. I won't name names, it's not fair, but there is a group of independent UK wrestlers who obviously I'm close with we talk to. And when that news went down, they were like, boys, the door, the door's open again. We don't have to worry about all these uh these things that we don't have. And actually on that note as well, given what everyone's talking about, you know, falling out from Raw and the fact that obviously, you know, MPW is is a is a woman's promotion. Um how because obviously you're far better, far better in a position to speak to it than I am. Because one of the, you know, when Thunder Rosa asked me to do the, to do this show, one of the coolest things I thought about it was, I mean, one obviously Thunder Rosa. So like you just said, you're like, how, what, what is going on? <laughs> but also too, like, you know, she made it, you know, very clear to me that she wants to get the message out there that you know, five, ten years or whatever it may be down the line, it's not women's wrestling anymore. It's just wrestling. And you can go yeah. to any card and you'll have men's matches. And you, you know, let's face it. There's no point in telling otherwise. There's been plenty of cards in the past, which has been, here's your women's match. And you're like, yeah. there's, a, there's a little little bit of, maybe not offensive isn't the right word, but I think we can think a bit bigger than this now. So how important do you think that we ha- it is that we have these promotions sort of popping up everywhere? Um, I think it's great. But I think the thing that Mission does right um, 
is that they don't just advertise as an all women's roster like they do, but it's not like gimmicky women's stuff. Yep. It's like, you're not going to see one specific girl throughout the whole night. Like mission brings in a variety of background. Mission brings in a variety of skill. Um, there's some people that I have never heard of that I've met on a mission pro show and have since like been able to follow their journeys or at least beat them and then not have to deal with them later. Um, but there's just, <laughs> it's, I feel like mission does very well at promoting the fact that women are not just these little Barbie dolls that um, they have been portrayed to be. You have women like Holly dad, uh, genocide, Kylan who like promote this more like, muscular uh physique because they're freaking strong and i'm willing to put money on them um over some dudes um, but it's like we have a wide variety um you have me and roche and roche is literally like the fashionista and so we give we give a platform <laughs> yeah but i think i think that's really cool like i really do and it's getting better over here as well like i was on a show on sunday and it was literally split down, split down the middle. I think there was eight matches, four were men's, four were women's. And oh, I was wow. like, yeah, and you know, like, yeah, I don't, it, it sucks that I even have to mention it, right? Because again, I think in 2022, we can get to the point where just book people because they're, they're good and don't try and, don't try and overthink it. But that's why I'm really pumped about this, about this MPW show. I should probably ask you as well, because you probably know him better than I. I mean, is JP Harlow... <laughs> Is he just an ass? I mean, he just seems like he's got a serious problem with everyone. Um, I think everyone has a problem with him just because <laughs> yeah. he makes it his mission to have a problem with everyone. But yes, he is just an ass. <laughs> okay, good. Well, that's good to know. Again, that's what I'll be taking on August 20th for people that are in and around the area. And uh, sort of a bit of a vague question I get, but you've, you have you have a, like, like I've always said this, uh, what's the best way to put it? experiences are the coolest thing about any walk of life right it, no matter what your yeah. passion is it's the experiences so you've ticked that aw box already no one can ever take that away from you and even if wrestling just closed down tomorrow it would be like <laughs> well I, I performed for aw and i was an extra in wwe some people don't get out of the gymnasium right they go to training they can't do it so i think that's badass but in terms of you know genie comes down now and, and waves a magic wand where would you, you know, in a dream world, where would you like to be sort of however long down the line? Like, where do you see yourself fitting in? Um, I mean, obviously it would be nice to be like signed because like right now I have like real world things to do. But if <laughs> I was probably, signed, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like someone could make my lunch for me. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I think it would be nice to be signed to at least have like a platform where I can do what I want and tell like a story that I want because you think about people like MJF who had the platform to do so, who had the platform to like draw out who he is and people went with that. People were behind him, even though he was very egotistical, but like here on the Indies, it's hard to do that. It's hard to like yeah. cement who you are because you have one promoter being like, you're going to be very aggressive today. And then you have another promoter being like, yeah, I get that crowd. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't think you understand. <laughs> no, it's it doesn't true. work like that. <laughs> but it's hard to like cement yourself um, in the Indies because everything changes. But if you have like that one constant like media that you can put the same stuff out, it's easier to cement who you are, um, what you want to do and kind of what you want to leave behind on this industry. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And that's something, and I love it. I love it when people sort of, I hate saying casual and hardcore wrestling fans, but people understand what I mean by those terms. Like when a casual rest, a casual wrestling fan will, you know, drop me a tweet or whatever. They go, Miller, I cannot keep up with your, your, your characters on the indie wrestling scene. I'm like, yeah, that's how it works. You turn up at one place and they go, you're doing this. <laughs> and you turn up at somewhere else, they got to do the complete opposite, which I do kind of like, because I think it gives you an array of skills. So that yeah, if you do get yeah. signed, if they do sort of put you in a position where they want you to do a specific thing, hopefully you've got the experience, you know, <laughs> you know, the experience elsewhere. Do you have any, I mean, I know what the answer is yes, I guess, have you sort of figured out a plan, but to sort of do, you know, overseas bookings, because obviously we're chatting to Holly Dead as well on this, on this video, on this show. And I know she's yeah. come over to Progress in the UK because that's where I met her. You know, that's why, that's when I said hello. I mean, do you want to follow in those footsteps? Is that something you want to do? Yeah, definitely. I would love to. Um, again, it was definitely something that was in the works pre-COVID, like trying to 
get that experience early um, and then with everything closing down. But for sure, I would love to go to like the UK, um, Australia, Japan. Um, but obviously, as I mentioned before, like real life issues, like that stuff costs money. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, I would be willing to do it, but I just don't. Um, I'm still figuring out like, how does one go about that? Like, how does one because it is a business. How do you link up with the right promotions so you can like optimize your time while you are there? Um, and then you just hear about like the overseas politics in some areas like, oh, if you work for them, you can't work for them. Oh, and so it's navigating that to not like accidentally, I guess, get yourself like. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it happens again. I won't name names, but I, uh, a promotion I have worked for, you know, recently put a link up in a in a certain, you know, internal group and was like, by the way, if you work for these people anymore, you're out. And you're like, well, that doesn't seem very fair, <laughs> does it? You're taking away wrestling bookings. But, you know, exactly. I think as much as the wrestling business evolves, I still think it has, you know, it's, it's uh, there's still stuff from the past that I think we could still get rid of, my personal yeah. opinion. But what do I know? Yeah. Abs absolutely nothing. And um, what would, what advice would you give to someone trying to break in in, a, in a, as a I, I, you have to forgive me for using this term but this is kind of how I want to how I want to pitch this to a to a woman's wrestler because I don't I don't know how it was for you but I certainly know when I was training it was like you know thirteen guys and two girls and obviously they yeah. became really close because you would do wouldn't you you'd start up a little and I I was terrified going to wrestling training for the first time I cannot imagine how intimidating it in it is must doing that and hopefully you know it's better now because it's a good few years ago this happened obviously we've been through a lot since then but yeah what kind of advice could you pass down for anyone that may find themselves in that kind of situation um just stay on my good side and um just lay on the mat for three seconds when you wrestle me. <laughs> I love it. Just let me win and everything will be fine. Yeah, and we'll be great. Excellent. I will be your best friend. <laughs> I totally agree. That's a good answer. That's really, really good. Well, Maddie, I want to thank you very much for your time. Where can people find you? Uh, social media and what else, else you want to plug out there? Yeah, I'm on social media, um, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok somehow, um, all under Maddie underscore Renkowski, and that's W-R-E-N-K-O-W-S-K-I. Uh, if you can spell it, you can find it. Also have a cameo, um, a big some big cartel merch store, <laughs> and pro wrestling tees nice. as well. Oh, that's yeah. cool. So you've got trying all the to things. make all the money. <laughs> yeah. That's half the battle. I've like, so many people when they see me going to a show and I got a big merch bag. And they're like, why you got so much merch? I'm like, because otherwise I ain't getting paid. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, I gotta feed myself. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I love it. That's one of my favorite things is telling non-wrestling fans how much independent wrestling shows pay and their face kind of just melts. You're like, trust me, once you do the match, you get it. You get this weird buzz and it's all okay. But there's, yeah. <laughs> there certainly could be more money. Well, um, I shouldn't have said that. I'm going to regret it now. People are going to watch this and get mad at me. Oh, well, really? what's new? <laughs> what's new? Nothing. Maddie, I want to thank you very much for your time. And more importantly, we're doing this on the 2nd of August. I'm very much looking forward to meeting you in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, for sure. Hopefully you win. Well, I don't know. JP Harlow seems to just have a, a posse of assholes <laughs> that accompany him. That's a, that's actually true. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think I'm, I'm and I I'm sure I'll have some support, but I am in I'm on foreign ground, right? So I'm yeah, a bit isolated. You are coming into this with not good odds right now. No, no, it's bad. It's I'll really bring a bad. towel. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's gonna be super hot. So that's another reason. <laughs> to check out that show again you can get all the information that's a mission pro wrestling site but yeah if you want to see simon miller melt as a human being you can do that. <laughs> so there's a selling point maddie thank you so much and i really do wish you all the luck with your wrestling career and again i will see you very soon yes sir hello my friends simon miller here and i'm very pleased to be joined by my second guest of today also from mpw and also a wrestling star it's the one and only holly dead holly how are you doing today i am doing as fantastic as one can do on the other side of darkness. You call me a star. The dark side is shining bright. It's a beautiful like it. thing. It's a beautiful thing. I like it. And you've made my first question very easy because you are wearing the MPW championship. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Because, of course, August 20th on the same card that I'm somehow on makes no sense whatsoever. But more importantly, you are, I believe, taking on Jasmine Alor. Well, no, you're defending. Your title against Jasmine Alor. Come on, come on. Get, get your words together. Get your <laughs> words together. I, I will. Defending. Hard day's night, August 20th. I mean, how are you feeling about it? And in general, too, 
how has it been working for MPW? In general, we'll get to that later. How am I feeling about the match itself? A little disrespected, if I can go back, Simon. You know, if you, if you follow the Twitterverse, if you follow the MPW fan base, people have been saying I've been ducking Jasmine. I haven't given her her one-on-one. Like, I haven't taken this freaking strap around the country, out of state lines, out of company lines, put this company on my back. And still, Rodney Dangerfield of professional wrestling, I can't get no respect. So I'm a little heated, you know. I'm not going to lie. Much respect, as much as I call her bottom tier, Jasmine Allure, top tier, play on words. I, I do. I don't think she's bottom tier. I do think she is the next. She is the future. But I'm the right now. I got now, and I'm not ready to relinquish that. So that's how I feel about the upcoming match in general. I am happy to fly the Mission Pro flag on my back, as I've said, across the country, across state lines, across promotional lines, and let people fuck around and find out and know. Love it. Love it. Nice and succinct. You can't muck around with that. And talking about it on a on a wider level as well, because I do think it's important to chat about it. How cool do you think it is that you have this promotion that is so dedicated to try and to promote women's wrestling and get that message out there? It, it, it is one of the best things. I feel it's it's very much needed. I, I feel we get clouded in this business. One or two things happen with the big companies that are like, women's wrestling is taking great strides, blah, blah, blah. Kudos, woozoo, all the good things. But as someone, people do call me Andy Darling. I don't know how I feel about that, but I'll take that title. And so I am out there every weekend on these independent shows. And I can say companies like Mission Pro are very much needed. It is still cards where there are zero or there's one women's match, or there's an intergender match, there's one woman on the car, or there are none at all. So this platform is very much needed. It's still a struggle. We're still behind the, the eight ball, you know? Like, we yeah. still got, we're taking steps, but we still got many, many more to take. So again, this platform is very much needed for all those women who don't get their face out there. They don't have a place to work. They're trying to fight on the car for that one spot that's available or not at all. Mission Pro is definitely needed. We need more companies like it, and we appreciate everybody out there working with us to make this business a better place. I think you've hit the nail on the head. I was talking to somebody about this at the weekend. And that's it. Like, it's hard enough to get a wrestling booking on a show to begin with. But if someone's only booking one women's match, it's like, well, where the hell are you supposed to start? Oh, that makes it, where that makes do it you twice start? as hard. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's so easy to just forget that. Because like you say, you see a big movement on AEW, or you see a big movement on WWE, and people are like, oh, excellent. But it all filters down. Right. And I, like I said, um, we talked to Maddie as well earlier. And what we really need to do is get to a place where it's not even a conversation because it just happens. Right. It's not women's wrestling, it's men's wrestling. It's just wrestling and everything is divided up nicely. I love that you said that. If you can take a good look, it says Mission Pro Wrestling Champion. It doesn't say women's champion. It just says champion because when we step in that ring, we are all wrestlers. We are all competitors. Yeah. It's not about this is your women's match. This is your women's wrestler. No, I'm a freaking wrestler. I'm a freaking competitor just like anybody else who laces up the boots and get in there. We just, we just want equal opportunity, you know, one day at a time, 2022. We're getting there. Maybe we'll see two matches on independent shows. Who knows? Who knows? One day at a time, uphill battle. <laughs> we can fight. Yeah. yeah. Now, obviously, you're doing the MPW thing as well, but you are, you know, you are well versed in the in the wrestling scene at the moment, and obviously, you've been doing a lot for for MLW, and you've come over here to the UK to progress. And I know this because I, I was the host of Progress, and I saw you. We were just saying before we started what a small world wrestling is. So, how is the kind of current landscape for you? And now that, I know it's been a while now, but now that we are out of the pandemic, are you finding yourself busy and booked here, there, and everywhere? Ah, uh, this is okay. This is an open-ended question. Uh, no one answer. For me, the landscape is always as it has forever been. It is a roller coaster. It's up and down. It's forever peaks and valleys. There are always the high moments where everything feels fucking great and glorious. Yeah. And then, we, oh, shit, we got to come down. I'm crashing. <laughs> no, what is life? What is this? Oh, no, we're coming back up. Things are happening. Up, up, up. We're here. We're going to sit here for a while. And we come back down. That's it's, so true. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how it is. It's up and down, you know, pre-pandemic, post-pandemic. Things started to pick up. But things things are, I don't know. I hate to say things are the same, but in a way they are. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm staying busy. I'm grateful for that. 
I, I want to, you know, I think about quitting wrestling every other week, but here I am because <laughs> it's the Peaks and Valley thing, you know. It's as I can quote my trainer, Gangrel. Shout out to Gang Grizzle. Oh, yeah. That he said it's it's a drug. Wrestling is a drug, and it's the best worst drug I have ever done in my life. It gives me that high, that great high that I never get anywhere else. And then, but then that shit only lasts so long. Then it comes down, it comes down, and I'm chasing that high again and again. But here we are. Here we are. I don't even know if I answered your question. But... I like no. As a fellow wrestler, I like that answer because you justify my own feelings. I go, I go through this on a weekly basis. Like what? Oh, it's the best, but it's the worst. I love it. I yes. hate it. And you're like, what? What is this weird relationship that we have? It is this love hate? It's the most abusive relationship <laughs> that I that I stay in purposely on yeah. my own. No um, one's making me stay. No one's saying. Stay, it's gonna get better. It's me making yeah. this choice for this abuse. But that's because, like you say, when it all comes together and you're doing that drive home, you feel it's the best. You're just happy. You're just content, and everything is all right for the moment. And then that shit, it comes crashing down. <laughs> then it goes back up. I don't know. It's a fucking stock market, I guess. It is. That's, that's what it's like. I did want to talk to you about MLW as well because. Over here in the UK, just, just through the nature of the beast, you can find MLW, but you have to go out of your way to watch it just because that's the way these things work nowadays. However, when you do sit down with that product, it's pretty damn good. And it has a lot of people on there, and I would include yourself in it, where you're like, wow, there's this eclectic cast of characters. You know, and it's, all, it's all ticking along. So again, how has it been for you for you working there? And I mean, not that you're going to have a proper answer to this, because who, who the hell would? You know, what do you think they can do in order to, you know, maybe shout a little bit louder? Um, I'm always grateful for, you know, any opportunity and, and different platforms that, you know, can help me get out there and help me perfect my craft and just put more eyes on me. And like you said, it's when you look at it in the roster of people, it's, it's so many different people brought together. And I think it's a great roster and cast of people. And I think that's just something that not just MLW, all these other promotions out there like that aren't the mainstream for the true wrestling fan, go out there, go out there and look, you're going to find some good fucking wrestling. I don't know if I can say fucking on your show. You could say I fucking, did. yeah, you can say it. Good. <laughs> Just go look out there. There's some good quality wrestling. If you if you can get outside of the mainstream and go dig dig deep, you're going to see some good effing shows. And so, like, um, you know, I, I've enjoyed my time there and the opportunities that they've given me. Um, You know, uh, not to go away from the message that I, I have been given, you know. Uh, unfortunately, it's still... It's not a uh, it's not a women heavy show, you know. It is it is one of those things where you know you might only have one segment, and you know, I know that's something they're working on. They have Dave Prazak in there, you know, uh, the man behind Shimmer, you know, helping him. He's helping make decisions on bringing some people in. So hopefully, we see you know more feel for the women's division over there. Yeah, well, I, that that's a that's a great segue to what I want to get to next as well because of course I think it was yesterday when wow announced their syndication deal or how you know they're going to they're going to get content out there and i mean you're still affiliated with that right so this must be quite a, a cool what announcement for you as well i suppose yes i said i i'm, I'm on i'm on an up part right now of the you know <laughs> it was low and then we're coming back up we're coming back up so you know it brings you down and oh something's happening we're coming back up so no um yeah, I have been working with WoW on and off for a couple of years. Uh, yeah. Different thing changes, forever changing in our business. Business, you know, different heads, different finding out what's right. Um, you know, we got AJ Mendez in there as one of the people working in there. Um, Jeannie Bus, one of the you know co-owners, also having to uh, own the Lakers. So you got you know some very empowered women in charge. And again, it is a all women's product, something that we need. And just saying, we hey, we are out here. We can do this. There's a slew of us. We can fill a card too, and we can perform up and down any card. So, like, what I, what I love about wrestling is there are so many different avenues and different venues. Because because certain fans like a certain type of thing. You might want this type of wrestling. You might want to hit this type. And you got your MLWs. You got your Wilds. You got your AWs. WWE. Impact. There's all these different promotions out there, and there's a place for everybody, and there's a place for every fan. And it's just like. This is this is the age of this is the age of the wrestling fan. There's so much content out there. Like this, they should be in a sea of like golden, I don't know, trinkets, fucking melting on them. I don't know. I don't know. My analogies aren't good right now. Where, no, it's good. No, uh, no, it's good. I like uh, it. A sea of golden trinkets is great. I think that's. What I don't know where that came from. I have no idea. But all right. I like it. I'm gonna steal it and use it all the time. Wrestling. Please is a sea of golden me trinkets. And I get credit. 
So you will. I make sure you um, get credit. So have you uh, have you filmed the content for Wow? Is that what you're about to do? Ah, uh, we we have filmed some. Uh, we've done a couple of tapings already, actually. Oh, okay, uh, right. So I can't. I don't know. I can't give away too much. No, of course. But, uh, yeah, no, no, no. Keep it still, man. Yeah. We we have done a couple of tapings, but um, uh, just as recently announced, September seventeenth is the the first date that. Uh, new episodes of Wild will be released, so just stay tuned for more announcements where you can find all that. But uh, another announcement was made uh, later this month. We will be doing some more taping. So if you are in the Los Angeles area, we'll be at the Belasco Theater August 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, or it's August 26th through 28th. It's on Twitter. Go to Wild. Check it out for exact Absolutely. details. I don't want to. I don't want to steer you wrong. No, it's all right. Support support all wrestling. And of course, come to MPW on the 20th of August in, in, in Texas. Yeah. Make sure you do make sure you do all of this stuff. Um, something else as well. And you you can tell me now we don't want to go down this route, but it's oh, rare that oh. I get to well, it's, it's rare that I get to talk to somebody that's kind of embraced it. Like, you know, the first thing we, we talked about when you came on was your, you know, the the dark the dark side of your character, right? Because that's what you do. You've got the face paint and you bring a certain I mean, the word that everyone uses, at least the word I use, is spookiness to wrestling, which I love, right? We've had it since, what, 19, whatever, years, right? It goes and goes and goes. Would you like to see sort of more of that come back? Because I, mean, I work indie shows, and it's really, really hard to come up with a character and a gimmick, and I understand that. But when someone like your good self turns up, or somebody else who has kind of, you know, they give themselves these edge, it's like, oh, wow, this is, this is cool, this is different. And nine times out of ten, you usually stand out. So I just wanted to get your take on that, really. I, I don't mind seeing it if it's if it's done right. Um, like you said, I do the dark side thing, but honestly, it's it's a it's a part of me. This is a part of me that yeah, I get yeah. to express artistically. I am seriously fucked up all in the head. Like this is just a reflection of who I am truly inside. Fans ask me all the time how long does it take for my face paint. I let them know this is not face paint. This is a mood ring. When my shit shifts, I shift. Because that is a great interpretation of how I am in life. So, like, when I say that, like, Gang Girl always told me, like, whatever you present out there to the crowd, you have to make sure it's authentic and 100%. If not, the crowd is going to see through it right away. Yeah. And I feel like I don't mind more of that coming if I can believe it, if it's real, if you believe in it. If you come out there half ass and pussyfoot, I don't want to see it. Like, I'd rather you just come out with some tights and be the Joe Schmo. But it does, it does take a while to, like, in wrestling in general, it doesn't take a while to figure out who you are and like be able to express that. When you first start, everybody's throwing ideas at you of what you should do, who, who you should be. And you're listening because you don't know what the fuck you should be doing. But it takes a while for you to realize, oh, this is who I am. This is how I express it. So I don't, I don't mind seeing more of the dark, creepiness, whatever. But I want it to be authentic. I want it to be 100. Don't go out there ripping people's characters off, just putting on fucking face paint and doing shit, whatever. And you don't know what you're doing. You have nothing to bring to it. Then it's kind of like, oh, that's bland. Like, that would piss me off. I'd be like, oh, you took somebody's shit. You have no idea what you're doing with it. And now you're just shit in the bed with it. Like, don't do that. I'd rather take your time, be authentic, coming from a genuine place and fucking present it. I think if that answers your question. Uh, it's the best <laughs> answer ever. I think that's one of the most important lessons anybody can take when they get into wrestling, right? It's just find that. I think it's sort of just presenting yourself as yourself for a while as you kind of navigate the waters, I think is the best thing you can do. And then when you've, you know, when you've got that, then start thinking, okay, you know, what, how, what can I present that here? Who am I, et cetera, et cetera. Because mm -hmm. you're right. The, the antithesis to what I said is a lot of people go, well, I just paint my face and I wear some strange clothes. And oh my God, Simon, like... you don't have no idea how much that fucking bugs the shit out of me. Like, all right, you got this cool paint. What are, what are you doing with it? Nothing. It has nothing to do with your character. It has nothing to do with the way you, nothing. Yeah. All right. Okay. Sure. All right. It's that true. I cannot get behind. No. Anybody hates me for it. I don't. No. You're 100% right care. because then that person gets in the ring and they just wrestle. I don't like this term, but it works. Generic style. And you're like, well, what's They what's do. Cool? Yeah. I well see it a lot, Simon. <laughs> it bugs the fucking shit. Be yourself, people. Be yourself. Honestly, that's such good advice. And as someone that went through a similar roller coaster, I mean, I, I cannot back that up enough. Um, before I do let you go, it would be remiss of me not to ask you the most stereotypical question ever. However, we can ask you this because you've done it. Now, obviously, you're working all over America. But again, we talked about it. You've also worked over here in the UK for progress. I think you're coming back soon as well. I could be completely wrong about that. But I, if, if, if you know, you might know more than I know. I don't. 
Okay. I do not have any dates, uh, skills, but you know. I'm pretty I... sure your name came up in a production meeting. Again, All I have right. no power, but I'm pretty sure it did. So hopefully I'll, I'll be watching my emails <laughs> fucking frantically now, refreshing, refreshing, Simon Sennett. Well, okay. right. I, I, well, I'll double check that, but I'm pretty sure. Um, But yeah, how is it for you, sort of? Because, I mean, uh, you know... I know for me, the first time I got an overseas booking, it was like, well, this, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me in the history in the history of the world. Like, how was it um, for you? And again, the most boring question ever, but I find it fascinating. You know, do you see a difference between wrestling fans depending where you end up? Absolutely. For me, I've always, you go back to interviews or whatever, I've always said, like, I've, I've never felt like I've had to be wrestling home, like, until now. Mission Pro, it has come a long way. We've come a long way to get to this point, but I've never felt like I've had a wrestling home. Everywhere that I've lived, like city-wise, I've never got to wrestle there. For whatever reason, the promoters won't book me. I've always felt like I've just been a fucking stray. I'm a stray cat. I go here, I go there, whatever, whatever. And I, I've said publicly, I, I wanted the UK to adopt me. Like, when I've been over there, it's like, I feel like I get love that I do not receive. In the United States, it's a fucking different thing. And it's just like, this is fucking refreshing. People like me. They appreciate my work. Fucking promoters. Oh, my God. They have this different sort of respect for me. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Are we in the Matrix? Is the Twilight Zone? It's like, I want this shit every day, all the time. It's like, I got to leave the UK now. No, I don't. I don't I don't know. For me, it's like the fans are very different. In, in any country I went, the fans are different. I... I I don't know what it is about here when I've been to the UK, Japan. It's it's a whole different vibe. And again, I don't I don't feel like I have a home. So it's like UK, adopt me. Your fans fuck with me, your promotions fuck with me. It's not the same over here in the States. So let, let's let's get the ball rolling. But Hell things yeah. are happening, so you know, I'm still I'm on that uphill right now. So we'll see, yeah. we'll see. <laughs> keep going, yeah, we'll I mean, let's do this in a month and see see where the peaks of the valley are at. Okay. Well, like I said this earlier as well, and I, and I stand by it. You know, I think life is about experiences. And the fact that just then you can jump in UK, Japan, America, no one can ever take that away from you, right? So even if uh, and even if wrestling was shut down tomorrow for some bizarre reason, again, like the, when you first walk into a training center, I think to be able to say, wow, I've traveled the globe doing this, this crazy sport, I just think it's badass. I think it's really cool. I think that's something, though, as performers, I know myself and others, we just have a hard time giving ourselves credit yep. for all the things that we have done and it's just this this day and age where everything is so instant instant gratification you see shit on twitter and then you're like oh why does that not happen to me or oh why is this that that like you forget like oh i've done some cool shit i've done some actually like legitimized fucking shit in this business don't take that away from me. so it's hard it's hard it's hard to see no, it from I... lens of others Yep, I know. Honestly, I think we all go through that, and that's why I think it's really cool when people like yourself sort of vocalize it too. I think it sends a good message out there to other wrestlers who are going, "Oh yeah, <laughs> I've done that." As I well. hope so. Hope I'm helping someone's brain out oh, there as you're listening. I think so. I think so, definitely. And uh, Holiday, before I let you go, um, obviously MPW twentieth of August. Uh, I'll be there somehow again. Still blows my mind. But any last words? And obviously, social media plugs. Throw them out there. But we know I how this works. I want to ask you about your match. You, you're facing the man of mission. How do you I, feel? I, I should ask. You, wait, well, can you tell me anything about JP Harlow? Because he's, he's that he's, is he's, a dirty, low down mother. My type of guy. So I'm just <laughs> my type of guy. Honestly, low down, a little dirty, a little squeaky, a little grimy. So you know. Just, just come, come ready. Come with your head on the swivel. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to because he's got a load of a load of dudes backing him up as well, and I'm on foreign ground, so I have no backup. You, you are you're all off. You have no advantage whatsoever. No, <laughs> absolutely. I don't want to say you're fucked or anything, but like, oh you know, no, I'm to I'm totally screwed. I'm, I'm totally screwed. It's gonna, it's gonna be good. a bad day. Believe, believe. I do right? believe. No, no, I do believe. I do believe it'll be it will be all good. But I am massively looking forward to it. And yeah, where can people hit you up on social media? Social medias. On the Facebook and the Twitter and the YouTube, Holiday H O L I D E A D. On Instagram, Holiday and I. Three different words all together. The word Holiday, the word and, the word I, all crunched up together. There's something else. If you want to buy merchandise? Go to storefrontier.com/slash/holiday. Get your hookups there. If you want to email me? Business inquiries only. 
Holiday Wrestling at gmail.com. Don't email me about no pool. All right. I think that's I think that's all. I think that's everything. I, all no, the things. No, no one will ever listen to that advice about they the won't. Email. They no. won't. I try. I put no. the disclaimer. All right. <laughs> no, I, still, a, I still you enjoy when I response, you did it to yourself. <laughs> yep. I still enjoy waking up and seeing uh, like WWE booking ideas in my business email. I'm like, all right. Oh, I, can't I don't get that, those. But... I want to I get those. Make a book of that. You should make a book of short stories of your WWE bookings. Come on. I should do. I should do. Business right here. You see this? I know. You're thinking outside the box. I'll be there soon. I'll, I'll keep All right. Let's, let's talk business. Let's up. talk business. Let's do this. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. And again, genuinely, what we've got about two and a half weeks until until the MPW show. Looking yes, forward to did. seeing you again and looking forward to watching your match. See you on the other side of darkness, brother. Hell yeah. You take care.